but she was in the hospital. She couldn't eat, she couldn't swallow, and they were trying to find out what the problem they ran, and they found a huge mass in her, in her chest. She, uh, they told her it was cancer, they wanted to take and run some tests on it. She, when they told her that it was cancer in third stage, and they could not operate because the mass was too big and too up in her neck so far. They tried to move it a little bit so she could at least swallow and take liquid. But when they told her that it was third stage and rapidly growing, she was afraid to die. She was afraid, she, she knew she was dying and she was afraid. She laid awake all night. She did not want to close her eyes. She was afraid that if she closed her eyes, she would never wake up again. So all night she laid there and just kept praying and asking God to forgive her for her sins. Like I said, she'd never been in church, never been raised in church. I've had the opportunity a couple times to witness to her, but she never accepted the Lord. But laying there the night and going over, she knew. And so she began to repent of everything that she could think of. I called her the next morning and talked with her. She told me what she had done and I asked her, I said, Alice, did you really mean it when you were repenting? Did you mean it? She said, yes, yes. She said, I'm so afraid. I said, okay, Alice, now let me give you some scriptures. I told her about 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. I said, Alice, you confessed your sins. He has forgiven you. You don't have to worry about them anymore. You don't have to fear about them anymore. I said, do you believe that? She said, yes, I believe what you've told me. So I said, the Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I said, Alice, from that moment on, you're a daughter of God. You're one of his children. Well, my sister called me a little later and Alice, she had called Alice to see how she was doing. They both live in Lake Havasu. Alice told her that I had talked with her and prayed with her and she said, I don't have any more fear. I don't have any more fear. I know I'm all right. We got a card in the mail today and it was addressed to my wife, but it was from Alice. And she told Ruth, she said, since your husband talked to me. I'm not afraid anymore. I know it's all right. God is still working, folks. He's still answering our prayers. I got a call today from another individual out of state, broken, telling me I'm so afraid. I need help. I need help. She said, I don't want my daughter to go to hell. Her daughter had gotten away from the Lord and gotten into deep sin. And she said, I don't want to, but she said, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I told her, I said, there's nothing, there's only one thing you can do, and that's pray. Really earnestly bring her before the Lord. You can't save her. I can't save her. Only Jesus can. But I said, you bring her before the Lord. I'll be with you praying for her. Hey, we're going to believe together. Shared it with Ruth. Ruth's praying for her as well. I believe that God's going to honor those prayers. I'm sharing these with you today because of what I shared with you Sunday. I am concerned for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I say the church, I don't mean just Bethany. I mean the church. Okay. There's so much compromise going on in the church and so much change. And people think they're all all right. They come to church. They worship the Lord. They raise their hands in the service. And they think, every, I'm all right. I'm saved. But I'm committing these sins. But it's okay because I go to church. Folks, no sin is going to go to heaven. That's what God is burning in my heart. We've got to get the church ready. I want to speak to you tonight. Isaiah. I want to look at chapter 6. Reading verses 1 through 18. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 18. 
Father, again tonight as we gather together in this sanctuary, I thank you for each and every individual that has come out tonight. Again, I thank you for the privilege of being able to be back in the sanctuary, giving praise and glory and honor to you. Now, Father, I'm asking for the next few minutes of time that you would grant unto me, your servant, the ability to share the message that you have put upon my heart. I'm asking, may the Holy Spirit go before me tonight. Prepare each and every one of our hearts that we would receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. I pray for those that may be hearing, uh, streamlining, that we are hearing. Touch every heart that we would receive your word. I ask it in Jesus' name. God's people said, Isaiah chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. With two he did fly. And one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Of, is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth, and I love this, the whole earth is filled with his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, Lord, send me. I want to just explain the setting of this scripture for a few minutes. Isaiah, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. King Uzziah had been a strong influence in the life of Isaiah. Second Chronicles chapter 26 tells us the story of King Uzziah. He took the throne, he became king at the age of 16, and he reigned for 52 years in the land of Judah. He reigned as king over Judah for 52 years. The Bible says that he sought the, that he sought the Lord God. He sought God. He believed in God. He wanted to please God. He did the things that God told him. Okay. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord. He had one of the largest and the strongest and the best equipped army, armies that Judah had ever seen. He went to war, when he went to war with the Philistines and all the enemies of Judah, okay, and God was with him, and he restored to Judah all the land that had been taken from them. When he went out to war, God was with him. He never lost a battle. He won every fight that they engaged in, and he was able to take back all the lands that had been taken from them. Okay. He built towers in Jerusalem and Judah. He dug wells of water in the desert. He planted vineyards in the mountains. His name was spread abroad even into Egypt because 
he had strengthened himself exceedingly. I want you to notice what happens when we follow God. When we truly obey him, our hearts are set on doing what God wants us to do. God causes us to prosper in whatever we're doing. As long as we follow him, put him first, and obey his word. Uzziah did it. He did exactly what God had spoken to him to do. He followed the Lord with all of his heart. And as long as he did, God blessed him in everything he did. God was with him. But when he became strong and famous, the Bible says his heart was lifted up and he sinned against the Lord his God. He became wealthy. He became prosperous in everything he did. He began to look at himself and and think, look what I have done. Look who I am. He began to forget all about God. He began to draw attention to himself. He began to do the things he wanted to do. And he quit following the Lord. What happened to Uzziah? He died a leper. He died a leper. So now we find Isaiah in the temple. As I said to you, Uzziah had a great influence on Isaiah. Isaiah was raised in the court of Uzziah. Uzziah had a great influence. When he died, Isaiah's heart was broken. But I want you to notice this. Israel's king is dead with all the pomp and pageantry that surrounded him. Their king is dead. But Israel's God is still alive. Israel's God is still alive. Isaiah has entered into the temple to seek God in this hour of darkness and despair. I want to remind you today, God is our refuge. God is our deliverer. God is our hope. When we're hurting, when we're broken, when we're discouraged, if we, like Isaiah, will go into the temple, go into the sanctuary, go into our prayer closets and get before him with all of our heart, God will reveal himself to us. No matter what we're going through, he is the Lord our God. Isaiah knew it, and he went to the temple to seek God. Now I want to draw your attention to something here for a moment. I want you to know that Isaiah, at this time, Isaiah was a prophet. He was a prophet of God. In the first five chapters of the book of Isaiah, we find that he had prophesied to Israel over and over, calling upon them to return to God, calling upon them to repent of their backslide and return to God, warning them of the things to come if they did not repent. We weren't warning them, God is going to judge it. Church, I, I said to you, I am very concerned about the church today. We live in the United States of America, a backslidden nation that has turned away from God. God was with us as a nation. God blessed us. But when we became wealthy, when we became strong, we began to follow the same pattern as some of the lands of the Bible. We got powerful, we got strong, we got proud. We're the greatest nation on earth. We have the strongest army on earth. No one can defeat us. And when we begin to take that attitude, America turned away from God. Began to do the things that God warned us not to do. The horrible sins that God told us not to commit, we have committed them. Okay, Not only have we committed some of the most abominable of sin, We've made it pass laws, making it legal to do those things. Folks, understand it tonight. America is backslidden and far from God. We need, as the church, we need to hear what God is saying to the church. If my people who are called by my name, you know, humble themselves, repent of their sin, God said, I'll hear from heaven and hear their land. All that's going on among us today. 
The fear that is gripping the heart of anyone you speak to. They're afraid of what's going to happen. How long is this virus going to last? What are all these things that are happening going to come to? Fear grips the land. But you hear me. This man, the Isaiah the prophet, this man okay, of God. Remember, he was a prophet. He was a man of God. But when he got into the temple, when he got into the presence of God, and God began to reveal things to him, he stands in the presence of the Lord of glory. And he sees himself as God sees him. Did you hear that? Standing in the presence of God, he sees himself as God sees him. And the spirit of conviction grips his heart. But pastor, you said he's a prophet. You said he's a man of God. Yes. Yes, he is. But when, he get, when we, and hear me tonight, when we really get into the presence of God, if there's things in our lives that are not pleasing to God, the Holy Spirit will bring us under conviction. We, may, we must make a choice. Am I going to repent of that? Am I going to get rid of it? Am I going to continue to follow on to the Lord? When we get into the presence of God, because God loves us so much and because God is not willing that any prayer, God, through the Spirit, will point out the things in our life that are not pleasing to Him. The Spirit of God always will convict us of the sin that's in our lives. That's His job. So Isaiah cried, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. My eyes have seen him, and I realize I'm unclean. I'm unclean. I want to remind us tonight, those of you that are maybe listening in, I want to remind all of us, God hears every word we speak. He knows every thought we think. Okay. God sees everything we do. We cannot hide from God. Because God looks upon our heart. God looks upon our heart. God stands pleading with us today that we make ourselves ready to meet Jesus. Pleading with his church that we make ourselves ready to meet the Lord. I shared with you Sunday morning, Revelation 19, 7. And it says, For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, that is the church, has made herself ready. But pastor, how do we do that? How do we really make ourselves ready? We get into our prayer closets. We shut the door. We shut ourselves in with God. And then we begin to pray and seek his face. And, and we ask him, Lord, search out my heart. You know my heart. You know every thought I have. You know the thoughts and the intents of my Search my heart and reveal to me anything that would separate between you and me. Between you and me. I ask you to hear it. The bride has made herself ready. If we are going to make heaven, we must make ourselves ready. For the Lord is soon coming. We must make ourselves ready for the Lord Jesus Christ. For I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is very soon coming. Very soon coming. And today, the Lord stands pleading with us. But the day is coming when he will stand to judge the unbelievers. To stand below. So the church must make herself ready. Hear me tonight carefully. Remember, Isaiah cried, Woe is me, for I am undone. I have unclean lips. What was he saying? He was saying, I speak things that I should not speak. I let things come out of my mouth that I should not speak. 
And God was bringing him under conviction. I want you to understand tonight, where there is envy, where there is strife, where there is jealousy, where there is backbiting or any sin of any kind, the church is not ready. Those that are committing these things are not ready to meet the Lord. Okay. Isaiah again said, I am an unclean man I, with unclean lips. Are we careful of what we say? Do we think about it before we say it? Do we talk about other people? Do we make fun of other people? Do we say things that we shouldn't say about them? Are we jealous of someone? Is there someone in the church that you're jealous of? Okay. Think about it. Is there bitterness or anger in our hearts? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I have said these things that are not right. I've said words that have come out of my mouth that are not pleasing to God. Think about it. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Okay. That means where there is no revelation of God, where the Spirit of God cannot convict of sin, people perish. Where the full gospel is not preached, where sin is not preached against, people perish. Question then that I have tonight. Are you reading your Bible? Are you reading your Bible? Are you spending time with Jesus in prayer? You see, when we really begin to read our Bible, when we really begin to, to study, pray, the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, will speak to our hearts of things that are not pleasing to God. Okay. So I'm asking you, are you reading your Bible? Are you really praying? Are you spending time with Jesus? Are you letting him speak to your heart? Have you gotten alone with him? Is there something that's troubling you and you're just trying to hold on to it and get rid of it yourself? It's time to get into the prayer closet. Get alone with God. And let him search out our heart. God loves us. God's not willing that any should perish. He's speaking to his people. Father, tonight, I thank and praise you for the privilege of preaching your gospel. Once again, I acknowledge unto you and to this people that in myself, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. I have sought you. I have prayed. You've spoken to my heart and I've shared with this people. But Father, I cannot change your heart. Only God can change our hearts. So I'm asking now, may the Holy Spirit speak to each and every individual. And Father, if there be anything, may the Holy Spirit begin to draw it. I ask it tonight in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Again, I want to thank you for the privilege of sharing the gospel with you to those that are listening into the service this evening, trusting that you just allow God to speak to your hearts. Service again here Sunday morning. We ask you to be much in prayer for the